liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah. Still coffee. Yeah. It's not over. <laughs> I've gotten some other kind of sick. It's too, it's too bad the doctor didn't give me anything to take for this. That yeah. would have been amazing. That's if, a lie. If I had taken it. <laughs> it yeah, okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So they gave me some stuff. I don't know, man. I just, I feel like I'm almost over it and I just don't feel like, I don't know, man. I just don't trust it. <laughs> I'm a skeptical person, man. I am too. I don't like to take medicine. If I can, if um, I can beat it without medicine, I would rather. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, if I was. If, the, the problem with the cough is that it, it, it reinforces itself. It's like a cycle. Like, yeah, like yeah. it creates the problem that creates the cough. Yeah. Um, yeah. At some point. Um, I, I'm still taking cough suppressant, uh, although I had stopped taking it for a couple of days, but I am taking it again because I thought I had strep throat. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that ain't good. And uh, I went in and I tested negative for strep, but, um, but my throat still hurts really bad and that's triggered a cough again. Like the cough has come back. <laughs> it's back, yeah. Um, and if like... And it's a dry cough, which just means that it's going to make itself worse yeah. still. So anyway, we're... <coughs> yeah, that's where I'm at. It's yeah, that's the, like, still... the loudest thing so far that's happened on the podcast. <laughs> nice. Um, we really got to invest in one of those buttons, man. I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah, uh, a foot pad is what Yeah. Yeah, a foot pad. Would, Although we sit right across from each other, so my Michael still pick, still pick up, up yeah. your cough. Yeah. Um, oh, well. Wow. Well. Sorry, everyone. We're, you know. Yeah. <laughs> One day we'll get better. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe this is just the way it is now. <laughs> yes, this is how I'll be for the rest of my life. Oh, Great. man, don't say that. Um, okay, well, uh, we had, our last podcast was July 1st, so the, the day after that was uh, the Independence Day, like the real the Independence. The real Independence Day, yeah. Um, where the Lee Resolution was, was signed and said, yeah, these... 13 colonies aren't a part of... Yeah, we're not doing this anymore. Great Britain anymore. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, 4th of July was Monday. Yeah. Which was a fun time. Yeah. I worked, so it wasn't, wasn't that much fun for me. But it was all right. Went to my mom's neighbor's and watched uh, fireworks, the city fireworks display from their backyard. <laughs> I, I got to watch the fireworks from the store across the street. Man, people in the trailer park across the street, they were they went big this year, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. Like it was well, that's they, good. Yeah. We we set off some of our own too. Um you know, like celebrate the war stuff, set off the little <laughs> uh firecracker tanks and yeah, you know, yeah. all that kind of thing. <laughs> that's cool. Little mortars and yeah, mortars are my favorite, man. I love setting off the mortars. Yeah, I like the fountains. Actually, oh, I think yeah. the fountains are the fountains cool. Fountains are cool. Yeah, I mean for a small scale. Yeah, yeah. Firework. Mess around at the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but it was you know it was a nice time and it was super hot here. Yeah, we live in dude. I'm telling you, man, it's it's hot this year. Yeah, not that it is hot every year. I don't know <laughs> what I'm talking about, but um, well, I'm kind of glad that it was because. Uh, I also had a um, a pipe leak in my house um, on the other side of the water heater, so I had no hot water for days. Ooh, uh, that's definitely better when it's ninety <laughs> degrees and right. It's you know, at least bearable. Super yeah. high humidity outside. I had to learn. I had to relearn some lessons about cold showers, though. It's been a while since I've taken a cold shower. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, was fun. Yeah, no, it took some after Sally, and that's because I don't know if you remember. So, yeah, the Hurricane Sally came through. Yeah, oh, it, I remember that was the then, last time that I'd taken yeah, a cold shower. Yeah, and then it got cold after that. Yeah, <laughs> so it was, yeah, the cold showers were very unpleasant. But my, my parents got their power back real fast, so I, I yeah. mostly showered at my parents. At, uh, we went you know. over a week, yeah. no power. That was rough, man. I almost, I think my... before that was Hurricane Opal for me. Oh, really? Yeah. When I was I... in Atlanta, yeah. Um, we lost power for like a week uh, yeah. for Hurricane Opal. And um, I was in the dorms at, uh, in college at the time, and they didn't, like, we didn't get, yeah. No hot water. <laughs> no. It was, uh, it was fun. Uh, I almost threw my back out shivering in the, yeah. <laughs> in the cold shower. <laughs> so. All right. So the key is to frequently turn off the water. Oh really? Is, yes. Is that you this think? is this is what I have learned. Okay. Like you turn the water on, you yeah. get your body all wet. You turn the water off, 
<laughs> you then, lather up. Yeah, then yeah. you lather up. Then you turn the water on and rinse it all off. Then you get your hair wet. Yeah. <laughs> so turn good. the water off, wash your hair. Yeah. Hmm. The See, the, the first day for me, <laughs> I was actually in this heat. I was actually okay uh, right up until I put my face in the water. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. I did pretty early because this is the first time I had a <laughs> cold shower in a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and when I put my face in the water, I felt like I was drowning for a moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I learned a lesson that that's the last thing you do. So mm. the, the next day when I had to take a cold shower again, the last thing I did was put my face in the water. And then I actually washed my face in the sink after I got out of the shower and was dry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that worked out way better. Interesting. Way I'll better. I'll have to, have to keep that in mind next time. <laughs> but yeah, first time I put my face in the water, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't breathe in. It was, yeah. yeah. Whole whole drowning reaction. It was, <laughs> it was awkward. <clears throat> but tons of fun. Um, and then, you know, I had uh, my brother and his family were in town. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And with my, with my two nephews that are like four and a half and... Almost two, like 20 months, maybe something like that. Yeah. Anyway, they were fun. Yeah, little kids are fun, man. They're a handful. <laughs> yeah, man. The, the four year old has unlimited energy. Yeah. Don't unlimited. Under, don't understand it, man. Don't yeah. Like... Non stop. But, yep. um, but it was, it was definitely fun having them down. So. Oh, always. Absolutely. And for the fourth. And it was the first time, I guess, that the four year old had been able to stay up for fireworks so oh nice um although he was like not at all interested in the fireworks oh, really? so, <laughs> yeah. oh that's a shame yeah uh well i say not at all he was he was not very interested in yeah. the in the fireworks really um he did like snap and pops man when my but kids, who doesn't yeah well when my kids were small man the fireworks that was the main event man like yeah. the whole day led up to when the sun went down man yeah your kids they always were, stayed up later anyway yeah my kids always even when they were small they were pretty accustomed to being up late and, yeah so. my, my sister-in-law was saying the main reason that um that my nephew hadn't done fireworks before is because in ohio uh, they're like one of the farthest west um, areas that's still in the eastern time zone. Yeah. So it doesn't get dark till really late, like way past his bedline, bedtime. Oh, yeah. So, Well, know. I mean, a lot of people put their kids to bed really early. Like my brother, mm -hmm. he puts his kids 7, 8 o'clock. Yeah, they, that's what they do And too. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. I mean, we just, I don't know. I mean, to each their own, obviously. Yeah. But my kids always, I mean, they stayed up late waiting for me to come home. Right. Like the nights I closed waiting for me to get home. And it mm -hmm. was never... Never really was a problem. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Never. It worked out fine. I feel like my kids came out all right. <laughs> At least half of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, the oldest one is definitely solid. The other one, the verdict's still out. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, um, I mean, you know, now's a, now seems like a good time with our, our country's birthday having just passed um, to kind of sit back and assess a little bit. If huh. uh, where we are and where we started, <laughs> and if this is where we want to be, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I have kind of a negative view of it. I uh, maybe too negative. I we're still like there's not a there's not a lot of places in the world that I would rather be. Yeah. Well, I think if you look on a large scale and zoom out, I mm -hmm. can't I can't think of very many better places. Yeah. Um, but. This place could be a lot better. <laughs> like, yeah. There's, there's plenty of room for improvement. <laughs> well, we certainly strayed far from where we started. Yeah. Um, as Dave Smith says all the time, like it was, or well, I guess he said once and then you hear the recording over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. But um, this was uh, created to be the smallest government in world history and it's become the largest. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that's certainly a problem. And especially after the last two years of COVID lockdowns and, and so forth. You th think about how authoritarian all of this has become. Yeah. Um, well, and it's scary because I don't know for for because so you look around like most of the COVID stuff is gone. Like mm. there's the mandates are gone. Like all of that type of thing. But you, to me at least, you still kind of have this feeling in the background. Like yeah. Like, it's gone now. Yeah, the it's not really gone. It's just hibernating. But the, but the infrastructure has all been laid out. Mm -hmm. Like, the premise has already kind of been put in people's mind that, that we can do this and that's okay. Yeah. And it that's a problem. And it's really a problem if you just take a look at where <laughs> we're at economically right now in this country. 
And you've got to kind of put the pieces together that, yeah, like maybe the last two years of lockdowns and COVID panic Maybe some of that led to where we're at. Well, and it absolutely did. Well, we know it absolutely did, but yeah. you got to think like the average person's got to kind of put some of that together, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and even if they haven't, it, it seems like it'd be really easy to make an argument to them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to uh, listen to the government talking about supply chain disruptions and not think, well, you shut down a bunch of businesses. Yeah. Like, why, how did you think that that was going to happen? work um well and it's it's funny because it's interesting too the particularly with biden being the one that's in there that the media at least tries to throw cover for all of this stuff and it's like just like the supply chain thing like what you're talking about but the same thing with the gas prices with putin like it's all of this deflection of why it's not his fault <clears throat> when when anybody with a set of eyes can look around and be like yeah like clearly we know what's going on here. Yeah. Well, and the, the regardless of which side of the aisle you're on, even if you're a Democrat, you can't be looking at what's going on and being like, "Oh yeah, this is all Putin." Like, yeah. I mean, oh, the, I'm sure that the people in Congress know better. Well, no, I'm talking about. The, oh, just I'm like talking about on person. the ground. Yeah, yeah, your average Democrat. Well, and the funny thing about that is that um, throughout, uh, certainly throughout the campaign season um, before Biden was elected, like he was constantly. The thing that he was constantly throwing at Trump was that Trump needed to stop scapegoating and take responsibility, take responsibility yeah. for the situation. <coughs> you know. Yeah, how's that working out, old Joe? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, and the, the thing I think to remember um, is that what we're celebrating on 4th of July is the, the secession of the 13 colonies from the British Empire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, uh, less than a hundred years later, we fought a war over secession in this country. Yeah. Um, but you know, <laughs> maybe it's worth considering again. Yeah. So I've had this conversation <clears throat> with quite a few people recently, actually. Just the 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 whole idea of the national divorce. Mm -hmm. You know, like let's just separate in the fifty independent places and mm -hmm. and be done with it. Yeah. Um. And it it fixes kind of a lot of problems. Like if, if you look at where we're heading as a country right now, I mean, I don't know a whole lot of people that would look at where we're at and how things are and be like, yeah, like we're on a good path here. Like, cause clearly we're not like, clearly we're on a destructive path. And the real question has to become, okay, well, we know we're on this destructive path. What is the, what's going to best, what's the best path for path forward to get through this? And to me, it's it's to me it's dissolve the federal government and dissolve it all back down to the states. Yeah, um, I but, think, and I want to see that happen. And because when I say that, people immediately think back to the the Civil War and be like, "Well, we don't want another Civil War," and that's true. We don't like. No. I, we want to see. When I say that, I want that. I, when I when I say that, I want this to happen as peacefully as possible. Um, yeah. and it can happen peacefully. Um, now. The if you want to look at the real reality is it would be pretty hard for it to happen completely peacefully mm -hmm. just because there's so many special interests that are looking to lose out if that happens. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like you, you have to wonder if you would have situations in border areas yeah. um, where uh, communities that were part of one state that went primarily one direction would rather be a part of the. Yeah, yeah, neighboring no. state that went the <laughs> other direction or something like that. Yeah. Um, and how that kind of thing would be resolved. Yeah. Um, you know, of course our, our position is voluntary relationships, right? Like, so yeah. people should be governed by the government that, that they want to be, that they want to be governed by yeah. if it'll have them. Yeah. Um, you know, because that, that that government also gets a choice in this voluntary well, yeah. relationships, yeah. but voluntary works both ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I, I I don't think, like, especially if it was in, um, it'll come down to economics in the end. Yeah. Uh, like, those kinds of disputes would be resolved easily or in a more difficult way based on economics, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, states wouldn't be willing to lose prosperous areas to other states and things like that. I don't know. It's, yeah. It, it does create an interesting situation, but I... On the other hand, 
um, trying to rule everybody under one government doesn't seem one very large and overreaching government as it is that tries well, to regulate every aspect of your life doesn't seem v- to be working very well either, and that could result in violence as and, well. And the bigger the government gets, the more this becomes a problem. Right. And the government grows under every president. Yes, like no matter what. Um, so I mean, we're we're definitely heading towards a destructive path. And just like you said, so like secession could be pretty ugly. Like it mm-hmm. could end up being at least mildly violent, if not like really violent, but staying together may be the same way. Yeah. And that's, that's where you start having the way out. Like, I mean, and we've already seen it be violent. It's not like it mm-hmm. just like this, this has already happened after George Floyd. Like we've seen plenty of violence already. So it's not like we're above it. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that that's a good example. Um, but, uh, We've certainly seen a lot of unrest after, like the um, this most recent Supreme, the Dobbs decision from the Supreme Court. Yeah. Although I think mostly it's because people don't understand. But yeah. Um, well, it goes. But it goes to <clears throat> it goes to a big part of the problem here is because the truth is is that the the states will get to decide in that and do what they want to do for their areas. Yeah. But the people that are in the states where nothing's going to change still want to force that upon the states that are going to change it. Yeah. And so you're still dealing with this this control issue. Yeah, and what's what's interesting also is that most <laughs> states including ours um essentially enumerate the bill of rights in the state constitution anyway. Yeah. So like those those real basics of of rights that um that are codified in the constitution wouldn't be going anywhere for really anybody. Yeah. I don't think. I mean, I'm sure that there are states that don't do that. Yeah. Um, but most of the st- like certainly all the states that I've lived in, um, their constitution has included um, an an enumeration of the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Uh, and of course, like in the U.S. or in the Alabama Constitution, they're all listed separately. So yeah. instead of like having the five um, rights codified in the First Amendment. Those are five separate um, oh, lines, lines. Uh, yeah, yeah, in in the state constitution and so forth. So hmm. um, it might even you know be a little stronger. Although then you can kind of nitpick and strike one out. And, yeah, <laughs> but right. It, I guess that works both ways too. <coughs> ah. um, so I. It is a question worth considering at this point. I, I think that a lot of people would then say, oh, well, then that just makes us uh, um, ripe for uh, being conquered by some stronger nation. I'm not <laughs> sure who that would be. Uh, yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, that That to me is a weak argument. Like, I just don't see, even if we are 50 independent states, anybody coming over here and being like, all right, we're going to go take Florida. All yeah. Right, good luck. Like you think, and you think yeah, Alab- people from all over the country think, like to vacation there. They would definitely fight for. Well, it. yeah. Well, and it, I just use that as an example, but mm-hmm. it wouldn't matter. Like I still, and it may not would be every state would jump to Florida or whoever it was, mm-hmm. but enough would. Yeah. And there's enough guns in this country that we it, we would we could squash anything pretty quick. Um, yeah, and, and defending still, our own borders is not that difficult at this point. Yeah, well, and and defending any borders, you you do have. <laughs> what is it? Ron Paul says like you could defend this country with a few good submarines. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, yeah, and that's I hadn't thought about that, but that's the truth. Yeah. Like, I mean, and you're always better on the defense than you're on the offense anyway. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, anybody that was going that's going to come do that's got to come over here and do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, home I mean, field advantage. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, I don't know. It's uh, it, it's always an interesting question, and I, people get really riled up about the idea of secession. Um, but you hear talk about it on both sides of the political spectrum. The, the yeah. Well, it depends on who's in charge. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. you know, California was talking about secession while Trump was in office, but now yeah. Texas is talking about secession with Biden in office. But yeah, that, that's kind of my point, though. Is like yeah. both sides have at least dabbled with it. Yeah. At one point or another, Texas was its own nation for a while, though. They're the yeah. only one, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I this could be avoided. I mean, I, this talk would be unnecessary if the uh, the government had the federal government had stuck to 
strictly what it was, being constitutional yeah, size. Yeah, what it was what it the powers it was given. <coughs> yeah. Um but if you're going to the more rules you have, the harder it is to keep people corralled underneath them. Yeah. I think. Especially when you're talking about like different different parts of the country that are just different by nature of mm-hmm. being on separate ends of the country. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Um I mean what because what's right for one isn't necessarily right for the other. No, I you know, we've decided on this path of one ring to rule them all. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, here we are. Um and it and it creates conflict. Yeah. And um but like we were saying earlier, uh dividing them up can create conflict as well. Yeah. So it, it's hard to know what to do, but um I only see two paths forward, really. Um, Either you trim back the power of the federal government so that it doesn't doesn't have as much control over every single state or the day-to-day lives of your average American, Um, or uh, you separate down. You decentralize one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. You either decentralize in the federal system and... um, give the powers back to the states and the people where they're supposed to be, or you decentralize by becoming 50 independent nations. Well, unfortunately... Or maybe not 50, but, <coughs> you know... Unfortunately, I see a third, much more dreary option, and I think that's the option we're going to end up opting for, is a, a more powerful federal government that does have to take more extreme steps to keep the the states and the people in line. Mm. Um, I mean, that's, that's definitely on the table. Yeah. Um, and with, and the reason I worry about that specifically for the reason I brought up earlier is that there's a lot of people that stand to lose if with smaller government, whether or not it's by states or even if we just was to make the federal government smaller, like there's a lot of people that that's not going to benefit a lot of powerful people. Yeah. Um, and never underestimate powerful people. Yeah, or what they'll do to retain it. Well, that's exactly yeah. my point, yeah. Um, well, uh, there's, yeah, you're right about that. I mean, but that's the direction where we're going right now anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, that, that's no change in pathway. Yeah, yeah, but it, it gets a lot worse, though. <laughs> like, because it could be a lot worse than what it is now. Yeah, um, and, and it's getting there every year. Exactly, exactly. Uh, like you said before, the government grows under every president. Yeah. Yeah. Year we've, after year after yet, year, the we've government yet to continues to see that growing. not happen. So, yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe the next one, but yeah. Well, well at like, least it's been like more than a century since we've had a president <laughs> right. that. Well, didn't. never in my lifetime, I can say yeah. that for sure. Not that I'm super old, but um, yeah, I'm older than you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel old. So. <laughs> well, and part of this problem is that, um, like, okay, uh, going back to the Supreme Court decision we talked about last week, the EPA decision, yeah. um. The, the way of governing at the federal level now seems to be create an agency, give it the power to do, to legislate. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it does a couple of things. Uh, if, first, it makes it more agile. Like yeah. the difference between a small company and a big company. A small company can make changes more quickly, generally speaking, than a big company. Yeah. Um, so you get a smaller group that gets to make decisions at its own level and not have to go through quite as much bureaucracy to get anything done. Um, the other thing it does is it protects all these legislators uh, from any kind of responsibility for yeah. the results of their... Because they can their, run against stuff that, you know... Yeah, that some some agency did. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, you can run against the CDC or the EPA or the... Um, yeah. Uh, whatever the uh, and but the truth is is even if you win election you're not going to do anything about it because right. like what are you going to do like <laughs> I mean like I'm hoping that that decision is uh, all right back up a little bit um that that is the way legislation <laughs> is, seems to be done these days though is to create a create an agency to create legislation yeah and um and this is a real dangerous way of doing things uh, it certainly was not the intended. Oh yeah, um, the founders would have had a fit. <laughs> yeah, because the whole point was to have um, the people in the states play a role in deciding who the people were that were doing these things. Yeah, and that way they can be held accountable too. Yeah. Um, but if you delegate down, yeah, uh, to some unelected 
uh, bureaucrats to do this stuff, then then essentially nobody is responsible. Yeah. And um, so it's effective for, again, retaining the power yeah. um, at the legislature, the influence or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's it's good at deflecting blame, which, yep. you know, is what, what have we learned, right? Like uh, admit nothing, deny everything, shift the blame, make counter accusations, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. that, that's, <laughs> that's pretty well that's the playbook. The yeah. um, so, you know, shift the blame is really easy. Yeah. That way, and I, I would hope that this Supreme Court decision is a, a harbinger. Wait, are harbingers always bad? I don't know. Anyway, I would hope that it because I'm a harbinger, I mean this but a good thing. Yeah, I mean this to be a good thing. I, I would hope that it would be a harbinger that there would be more decisions like this that would would wrest power away from the agencies and put it back in the legislature where it's supposed to be. Yeah, um, because all the agencies should be in uh, in. Uh, capable of is enforcing, not legislating. Right. R- yeah. I mean, um, uh, I mean, I wouldn't have any of these agencies to begin with. So, like, yeah. I mean, if you want to talk about what I would do, but just talking about like theoretically, what sh- the way it should work mm-hmm. is that you have the agency and they enforce whatever the legislator has passed. Right. Um, and hey, make recommendations or whatever, but the well, yeah, the agency and, itself shouldn't be capable of legislating, of yeah, creating basically regulations point, and rules. Yeah, and the recommendations are enforceable. Yeah, and that's that's no good, like. right? <laughs> um, especially the way government agencies grow. Anyway, is the the it, you create problems essentially to um, yeah. to try to solve to perpetuate. Yeah. The existence of your, of agency. your agency, yeah, exactly. Um, but I don't, I I don't know that this is actually going to be um, that landmark case. This is why I didn't make such a big deal out of it last time. Um, like I I wanted to talk about it, but I because it, it is important. It like yeah, there is something noteworthy about this decision. Yeah. Um, to say that the the EPA was exercising authority that was not granted to it by the legislature. Yeah. All right. The, there's something noteworthy about that. Um, and that that statement could be applied to probably every government agency. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but um but Roberts wrote the opinion. Yeah. And he uh, he typically writes his opinions in a way that they're not broadly applicable oh yeah yeah um so they couldn't reference it for another case like i mean the they president. can yeah they can reference it but it's hard to make precedent out of it because he finds a way of making it only about this particular instance gotcha gotcha um i don't know that he did that in this case uh yeah. i can't say i didn't read the whole opinion yeah. but um but i suspect that he did yeah. just because that's his he does that's his move yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, it, it is, it is worth being kind of optimistic about it, that you have a court that would make that decision. Well, exactly. That's the real, real thing. I mean, Mm -hmm. and you look at the opinion or the, yeah, the opinions that came out of the court, this cycle, I mean, there's, they did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I I know that people are unhappy, but I've, I've heard people even on the other side saying, well... Um, I don't agree with the decision, but I appreciate that the court is making decisions based on the Constitution. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, There's something to that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, you know, a lot of people that don't agree with the decisions would say that that's not uh, that it's not based on the Constitution anyway. But yeah. um, particularly about the Dobbs decision, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that was something actually. All right, I'm I hit a tangent. Sorry. All right, here um, we go. <laughs> That was something else that I wanted to kind of point out about that um, is that I, I did want to point out that th- that really the purpose of the Constitution, besides like the description of how the government is going to function, yeah, um, like the the mechanics of the government is really most of the Constitution. Yeah. But the the Bill of Rights is um, is an attempt to kind of codify the basics of natural rights. I mean, our founding fathers were really about uh, protecting the natural rights of the people. Yeah. And um, so that's where, like, this decision, the the Dobbs decision, or the, you know, I, I do like to talk about the Ninth and Tenth Amendments to say, because these are the often overlooked amendments. Yeah. And, and But they're really important. 
Yeah. Um, the the Ninth Amendment saying that the you know enumeration of rights in the Constitution does not represent an exhaustive list. Just because it's not mentioned specifically in the Constitution does not mean that it's not a right. Yeah. Um, and then the Tenth Amendment saying that if we didn't get specifically give power a, a particular power to the federal government, it remains with the people in the states. Yeah. All right. Hey, and the Tenth Amendment has a whole center, by the way. Yes, it does. <laughs> you should go check that out if you haven't. <laughs> we interviewed uh, Michael Meharry from the Tenth Amendment Center, I guess, a couple of years ago. A couple ago, of years now. ago, yeah. yeah. Um, but you can go back in the in the archives and find that interview. That was that was right before COVID, so it was like February 2020. Yep. Um, and we talked about COVID <laughs> in that. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, my memory of what we talked about ended up being pretty prescient, but yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't gone back and listened to it since yeah. then. Uh, but it, it was a fascinating interview anyway, just because Michael Meharry is pretty fascinating. He's like a really interesting guy and uh, very logical. He's got his his positions are well thought out. Yeah. Um. And uh, and it was really uh, a lot of fun talking to him. Yeah. Um. But anyway. Um. This is where, like, uh, you run into some problems with... I, I think what you can really start dividing things down um, is uh, aggressive versus defensive um, and uh, in terms of rights, um, the negative or positive, right? Yeah. So um, the negative or positive is essentially, like, what I would tell people, the reason that you know that abortion is not a right... Yeah. Um, is because it requires somebody else to do something. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, wait a minute. What about my health care, right? The health care. Also not a right. What about my right to clean drinking water? Also not a right. <laughs> um, Come on now. You're taking all my rights away. I'm being oppressed over here, man. Yeah, this <laughs> Mike's this is true. Mike's oppressing me. I'm a terrible person. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. the So you had the right of self-defense. Yeah. Which doesn't require anything of anybody else. Except you. No, it doesn't require anything of anybody else. Well, it, it, well of anybody else, but it requires something. You have to provide your own self-defense. Right. Yeah. Um, now, how you choose to do that is another question, but you're not, you're not obligated to do something to, for yeah. the, the right of self-defense. Like, um, or you're not obligating somebody else to do something yeah. uh, for your right of self-defense. Like right? with health care. Like with healthcare, yeah. Um, and that's where the like the abortion right kind of breaks down, I think. Um, yeah. But the and of course, uh, well, what if I wanted to perform my own abortion? Well, then, uh, then you run into another problem. Yeah. Um, which is the the question of of life itself. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's another reason that that becomes. That abortion is a sticky issue. Yeah. Um, is because you have competing natural rights. Yeah. Um, so you have the the right to life, out of which um, you derive the right of bodily autonomy. Yeah. Right? Um, so everything starts with the right to life. Yeah. Uh, now, the, the problem, of course, is that it, it depends on where you think life begins, which of these takes precedent in the case of abortion. Yeah. <laughs> right? So um, the woman has the right of bodily autonomy. Yeah. Absolutely. She yeah. she can do with her body as she pleases, just like all the rest of us. Yeah. But she doesn't have the right to take a life away. Yeah. And so if you think that the fetus is a life, then its right to life takes precedent. And anything she does to remove that right from the baby yeah. or the fetus is itself an aggression. Yeah. Right? So, Absolutely. Um, and... And so I, I can see somebody turning around and saying, uh, well, you're, you're talking about the right to life, but the right to have a gun is the right to take somebody else's life. Yeah. No. Well, the, it boils down to the right. Yeah, it boils down to the right for defense. Right. Yeah. So um, you don't have the right to just go out and take somebody's <laughs> life, but if somebody's threatening yours. Yeah. You have the right to defend yourself. You have the right to defend yourself. Yeah. So that's why I say, you defend know. Defend you yourself have to, by any means necessary. Right. That's why I say that you have the, the two axes, right? You have the positive and negative rights. And so only negative rights exist as far as I'm concerned. Like yeah. uh, any, nothing can be a right that requires some action that obligates somebody else to action to on your do behalf. Something, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you have the question of aggression and, and defense. Yeah. So um, nothing is a right that 
if it involves aggression against another. Yeah. That's fair. And so now that I've gone down that path, I have no idea where <laughs> where we were, or where we yeah. where we stand. So what were we talking about? Uh, we could just wrap it up. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, no, but it, it's uh, it, with the power of the government agencies. Yeah. Um, and this is a big part of why this government has expanded and expanded and expanded and expanded. Yeah. Um, so you know, none of these agencies existed at the beginning, and now. Uh, the government uh, sucks up a huge percentage of the GDP of this country um, for its own operations where it never did before. Yeah. And, well, I say it never did before. It didn't for a very long time. Yeah. Um, and it's only, like I say, it's only gotten worse and worse. I mean, we're at the, I mean, yeah, the debt's and I don't even know what the debt is anymore, but it's insane. It's over $30 trillion, I think. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Um, and well, and that's the, another... the weird thing to me is that people are clamoring for this. Yeah. Like people want the people actually believe that the government can solve their problems. That's I think part of the problem. Yeah. There is that just that people actually believe in the power of government to solve their problems. Yeah. Um if you reject that. Yeah. And well, it, if if you recognize the fact that most of these problems they created in the first place. Right. Like and so you're asking the person who created the problem to come step in and then solve it for you. Like, how do you think that's going to play out? <laughs> well, they just create new problems. Exactly. <laughs> um, Got to justify your existence somehow. Do I have to go back to the school bus on the ice? No. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, on the Weather Channel years and years ago, um, there was a video. I wish I could track this down. <coughs> and um, I don't know where I'd put it. But uh, <laughs> I, I wish I could track down this video but it perfectly represented government to me. Yeah. Um, and so what it was is a, a school bus slid on some ice and, and like bumped into a, um, like a stop sign or something. I mean, like a, yeah. some like sign a on, the, vendor, on yeah. the side of the road. Didn't really do any damage, but yeah. um, then... Got kids on the school bus. The reason yeah. to be concerned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm pretty sure nobody was hurt. It wasn't, yeah. a, it wasn't yeah. a serious accident. Like yeah. they were coming to a stop and it, they just, just lost... Yeah. yeah. Um, so then... Uh, <laughs> a few minutes later, like police arrive and the same thing happens. <laughs> like they're slide, they're trying to stop they're sliding, sliding. And then they bump into the school bus yeah. and then the other cop car bumps into the back of the first cop car. Yeah. And then a fire truck arrives and it bumps into the back of all the, and I was like, this is exactly what happens when you call government in. It was like, it's just compounding problems. Like yep. you, you call in the government to fix a problem that started with government they arrive and create a bigger problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you call more help from the government and they arrive <laughs> and create a bigger problem. Yeah. It's, it's just, it just compounds. <clears throat> and uh, so I, I wish I could track down that image. It was, it was Weather Channel <laughs> and it was like a decade ago probably at this yeah. point that I, that I saw that. But it will always stick with me. Yeah. So I was like, yep, that's, that's it. That's government at work right there. Yeah. Um, and so like maybe if you can't, if you can't get them to roll back, maybe the answer is to to separate yourself. Yeah, dissolve altogether. Yeah, I mean the Constitution was created as a contract between states. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> while there's no express um, mechanic, I, I guess to uh, withdraw from the contract. Yeah. You can withdraw from contracts. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and what, what we really need to happen is for some kind of like what happened in Florida um, during COVID is some governors to really step up and really like take hold of that position and like push back against the federal government. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I think that's kind of where all Was of it us. Christy Nome in South Dakota? South too? Dakota, like, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think they were really the only two, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, Florida was late like, getting on board. I think, yeah. uh, I think South Dakota like never complied. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Florida had kind of came in late. But when Florida came in, he came in. they came in strong. Yeah. Like, well, um, Texas did too, eventually. I mean, like across the South, it, yeah. at least. After it, a while. Once, yeah. it, in, in the Midwest as it well. It took longer than it should have. But once they kind of got the feeling like, all right, like this, this really is a bunch mm -hmm. of smoke and mirrors here, they mm -hmm. started pushing back some. But I think that's what you need. I think that's kind of where all of this would have to start is with some governors really standing up to the federal government. And then let it kind of build from there. But but you also need, you're going to need overwhelming public support. Like it, You really can't have like a 
50% plus one here. You know, you really need an overwhelming amount of the country to be like, yeah, this is probably the best thing for us to do. Yeah. I mean, do you need an overwhelming support in the whole country or you just need overwhelming support within the various states that want to withdraw from the union? Well, that's a fair question. But if you want it to be peaceful, I feel like you've got to have over. I I feel like you need an overwhelming of the country. If yeah. you want, if you truly want it to go the way we want it to be peaceful, yeah. So, um, like Alabama wants to withdraw, and there's overwhelming support in Alabama to withdraw, and California and New York are both like, yeah, we don't want you anyway. Well, I was that's fixing, what you, <laughs> that's yeah. what you really want. Well, and I, yeah, and I feel like that, and I think that's feasible because mm-hmm. I mean, if you, if if we were, if Alabama was like, yeah, we don't want to do this anymore, and we're serious about it. Um, Nothing, dude. Move okay. on. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're, you're you're moving stuff around on me. Um, yeah, but if Alabama stepped up and was like, "Look, we're serious about this. We're going to do it," um, and then I think that the more liberal states would be fine with it. They would, I don't think that they would. Well, they wouldn't right now, but I could see a scenario where in they they may be. In hey, the, man, they were protesting like crazy in both of those places for the women of Alabama. Yeah, sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Um, I mean, they they there is. Now, well, it, I, 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 think I will say the, this about that <laughs> argument, though. There were a lot of women in Alabama that were protesting, too. Yeah. So, you know, I think if you had more of an issue where Alabama was pretty solidly like, this is what we want to do, um, I don't know. I could see a scenario where the, the other states might, may back off. Yeah. But maybe not. Like, But that's why I'm saying it, for it to happen peacefully, you that's what you would need to see happen. Yeah. Is that Alabama's like, we want to go, and California being like, well, go. <laughs> yeah, know? I think you're right in the first place. I don't see it happening peacefully because um, people who control the narrative would lose too much. Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's and the so issue. so they would never allow it to be a peaceful thing. It would be, I mean, it's the same thing that happened in the Civil War. Yeah. Like, there was no real reason, like, Lincoln wasn't intent on freeing all the slaves. Like, the, there was no real reason yeah. um, that they had to, to make sure to uh, subsume the South into the, the Union, um, except that uh, it was a divided economy that way. Um, it was a competitor uh, it just, it was representative of something that they didn't want. Yeah, exactly. Which is the reason I say you need that overwhelming majority. That's the only way you flip it. Mm-hmm. That's the only way you don't give them a choice. Um, the problem is, is they, just like what you were saying, they control the narrative. Yeah. So like you'll never get like positive press on the idea of secession. Yeah. Like you're never going to have the media behind you in that. And if you think that there was censorship on the COVID stuff. Oh, can you imagine the, yeah. I mean, they, they would, I mean, you end up to a point where seriously, they start like locking people like me, you and me up yeah. for just discussing it. Like if this, if this, if this idea truly gets traction. Like this we, podcast right now that we're recording. We would we'll be get, in jail. Um, I, well, well, I mean, yeah, that might be true. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this, this podcast, no matter how old it is, whenever that comes up. Yeah will be disappeared. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so you're talking about as far as the censorship. Yeah. They mm-hmm. would just completely wipe stuff like that out. Yeah. Um, so, and make an example of people. I mean, it, we wouldn't be big enough for this, but there mm-hmm. are plenty of people that are, that would be made an example of. And we might be up. by then. Hey, we may be, <laughs> we may be now and just not realize. <laughs> no, that's true too. So. Keep tracking numbers very well. Um, well, and this is, really scary to people and I, I get that but um, I, I like to go back to Lysander Spooner on this thing who um, who says that there's there's really no difference except in degree between political and shadow slavery yeah and so a person who is governed by a government that he does not want is just as much a slave yeah oh I absolutely um, they're and this is a this is a sticking point for a lot of people. Like, how can you just let people choose what government they want to be a part of? Yeah. Well, how can you not? Is right. is my question. Like, how right. can you impose a government on a people that don't want it? Yeah. And and consider that to be the moral position. Right. <laughs> That's the least moral position. <laughs> so, um, I mean, but this is this requires a real shift in thinking, I think. And 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 the shift in thinking that's going on. 
um, throughout the world, but certainly in this country right now is actually in the other direction. It's the wrong direction. Yeah. So um, I don't see this as being something that's the that's seriously considered anytime soon. No. Although um, political revolutions happen really fast. Yeah. And like so. I say, you've got a change in the Libertarian Party. And I'll go back to it, man. I've made this argument before. I don't know if I've made it on the podcast. But I think that the shift in the Libertarian Party that's happening right now could be something to, to at least spur on some of that, um, I don't like revolution, I guess. I mean, I don't know, like to at least start changing <clears throat> some of the ways people think and have, have a place for people to go that agree with us. Yeah. You know, uh, because the libertarian party hasn't been that, like it hasn't really been a home for people who, for, it hasn't been a home for libertarians. Yeah. It's been a, let's take some things that are kind of, you know, things that maybe some people can get on board with, but not really rock the boat. Yeah. Um, but, but you think about Ron Paul's, <clears throat> um, two campaign, last two presidential pe campaigns, like that was a place for libertarians to go. Like yeah. that was everybody. If you were a libertarian, you were rallied around Ron Paul during those campaigns and it was a big movement and it made a lot of noise. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that that's what the libertarian party can be again is is kind of you know the Ron Paul revolution coming home yeah um and and stuff like that can start what you're talking about as far as like a political movement political change that happens fast mm -hmm. when you get everybody united under one voice like that like that can happen yeah um, it doesn't take a large percentage of the population either yeah well, and and to to at least get people thinking different and start changing people's minds, mm -hmm. because well, you have to have those ideas introduced to people first, and and that's kind of the point, right? Is that yeah. the Libertarian Party hasn't been that um, voice? Yeah, hasn't been radical. Yeah, hasn't been a, a voice for like real libertarianism, <laughs> real hardcore libertarianism, real decentralization, and yeah. um, and real small government. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and maybe it will be now. Yeah. And then it's out there and at least it's a, it's a name that people know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's yeah. not real popular <laughs> at this point, but it, it is a name that people know. It's a name that people know, but they don't know a lot about. Yeah. And which is good actually, because <laughs> now when, when they start learning about it, they can learn correctly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the way I see it. <laughs> not on board with woke libertarianism. I'm going to take half the pass on that one, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that's a good place to wrap up. And my throat's about to give out. So yeah, I ain't got much left in me either. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we, there's nothing going on next week, right? Nothing I'm aware of. I don't think so either. I got a whole bunch of appointments, but they're like normal things. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, we expect to be back in a week. Maybe we'll get back to Thursday again as my, um, last night was last night. My brother and his family were in town. So uh, we were going to do dinner and all that stuff. Should have had them on the podcast. I offered. Oh, did you? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, we expect to be back in a week. In the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Is that everything? Yeah, that's everything. Yeah. Uh, like and share, comment. Um, you can always send me an email at michael at thelibertymike.com. Um, I guess that's it. Yep. Uh, gosh, that's it. That's right. it. We mm -hmm. actually have an Instagram account. Never used it. Yeah. Uh, I've logged in a couple of times. Um, <laughs> I haven't even done that much. So yeah. I'm not a big picture taker. So. Yeah. So. I, don't know. I mean, you can put all your memes on there. Yeah. yeah. I could definitely do that. Yeah. Um, maybe that'll become meme central for the the Liberty Mike. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, join us again next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.